Hey, this is Dr. Michael Beria. I'm the director of orthobiologics at The Ohio State University. Excited to walk you through our uh, setup and technique for the autopost restore procedure. And so up top here, we have two syringes that'll be used to hold the tumescent fluid. We have a 14 gauge infiltration cannula, the autopost restore syringe device, and then a 14 gauge caraway cannula that'll be used for the harvest portion of the procedure. So when we're selecting our site, I like to go from the abdomen. You can go from buttock or flank or thigh, but this is going to be the most well tolerated and the easiest portion uh, to keep clean, both during the procedure and during the recovery phase. So uh, when we're marking our site for the abdomen, we'll palpate on the ASIS and then the 12th rib here, and then we'll pick a spot halfway between, and that'll be our entry site. So we'll make a mark there and we'll plan that trajectory will be just in the horizontal plane. And then we're going to fan out in about a 45 degree wedge-like pattern. And it's always going to take this inferior tilt. So it's not going to be straight at the umbilicus. It'll always have an inferior tilt because that's where most of the belly fat will, uh, will be. and It'll be the easiest to harvest. Uh, then once we have marked our site, we'll do that bilaterally. And then we'll prep the entire portion of the abdomen all the way across so that it gives us the most freedom to do our procedure. So as we're prepping the abdomen, it's also important to take note of any surgical sites, any scars, any hernias that might present themselves because those are areas, it's not gonna be an absolute contraindication to a lipo aspirate here, but they're just simple areas to note and to stay away from during the procedure. Small scars uh, are not a problem. If you see a bigger incision and there's none present on the contralateral side, it is permissible just to do a unilateral harvest. We prefer bilateral harvest. That helps to maintain uh, symmetry and prevent any contour irregularities. But if the patient has enough adipose where a 25 to 50 cc's uh, wouldn't be noticed by the patient and they have a larger unilateral scar, then just harvesting uh, in a position away from that would be your safest bet and most well tolerated by the patient. We're ready for our local anesthetic phase. So uh, this isn't the, the full tumescent phase. This is just getting the patient comfortable with uh, 10 cc's of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine. Uh, just to get them comfortable and it also is a good step in judging your needle placement and needle depth and so here on the screen we have our abdomen uh, layer so we have the adipose up top and then at the bottom half of the screen you have the abdominal musculature so as we introduce the needle we'll want to be careful to stay in the adipose layer and not go at too steep of an angle so that we make contact with the abdominal musculature. So you'll see that I'm gonna introduce that needle here from the top of the screen. And we found it under ultrasound. And so it's clearly in the adipose layer. We're not in danger of hitting the abdominal wall or advancing through it. From this position and this angle, we'll start administering our lidocaine. So now we've let the lidocaine sit for one to two minutes, have a full anesthetic effect, and we're ready to make just a poke incision, exact same trajectory and plane that we were for our uh, anesthetic phase. Um, so scalpel goes in, very gentle here. Just make our incision. Once we've done that, we're ready to begin our uh, tumescent infiltration step. And so we have our 60 mLs of tumescent fluid hooked up to our infiltration cannula. Uh, the mixture of tumescent fluid that we use to create it, we take a 250 cc bag of sterile normal saline, inject 50 cc's of 2% lidocaine and one amp of epinephrine. And then from that, we pull out two syringes of 60 cc's that we'll administer bilaterally. We insert the cannula right where our incision was and we stay in that same horizontal plane and our entry into the adipose layer is felt as usually a single pop and you felt that release right there. I like to keep my free hand at the midline because that helps me judge uh, the depth of the cannula to make sure I don't advance too fast and too far. As we uh, start administering the tumescent fluid, we just stay in that wedge-like pattern. If we hit any resistance, we're just, we just gently try to advance through it. That's popping through the fascia in the adipose. And we do that in our 45 degree wedge-like pattern. Every pass we make, we try to just administer one to two mLs of tumescent fluid um, until our full 60 cc's have been administered. The patient should be comfortable this whole time. And so uh, if the patient's experiencing significant discomfort, stop, reassess, uh, you might need to administer more local anesthetic.
So here is that same step using our infiltration cannula to administer our tumescence. We're, you can see that we're in the adipose layer. We're well above the abdominal musculature. And you can see I don't have uh, a very steep angle on my uh, needle depth here. So we want to stay in the horizontal plane. We're just slightly below that, but we don't want to go excessively steep. So we're here, and as we start just moving back and forth, you can see that needle tip moving easily through the adipose. And then as we administer tumescence, you can see those layers really start to expand. And that really is what aids with the harvest. So now we've administered all of our tumescent fluid. Uh, we're going to let that sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, certainly no shorter than that. Let it have its full anesthetic and vasoconstrictive effect. Uh, and because it's going to be uh, a bit of time, go ahead and place uh, some sterile gauze on that area just because some of that fluid is going to leak out a little bit. Um, and that's normal and expected, uh, but it's a good thing for patient comfort. And then make sure that some team member is always with that patient just because uh, they're going through this medical procedure and they're going to be laying in the room for 15 to 20 minutes. We always want someone to attend to them. So we've completed our tumescent fluid administration. That'll sit for 20 minutes, and then we'll be ready to begin our harvesting process with the autopost restore syringe.